What's up guys, GT here. Now, in my opinion, Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah's Clean Tone is one of the finest and one of the most amazing clean tones I've heard in a very, very long time. It has forever eluded me. It's so simple, yet it's so immersive and it really puts you right in the center of the stage with the guitar player and you can clearly hear the guitar surround you. It's just beautiful. I have no words to describe it. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I tried to recreate that same guitar tone using the AxeFX2 and the AxeFX2 only. So without further ado, let's jump into the AxeFX2 and let's dial it. Alright, before we begin dialing in the tone, a couple of quick disclaimers here. I am playing a Fender Stratocaster. I believe the tone was played on a Telecaster. I don't have one. So you might have to tweak a few settings to suit your gear and to make it sound better on your gear as well. So keep that in mind when you're dialing in the tone. Also, get your capos out, put them on the fifth fret or wherever you like, doesn't matter, but make sure you're not playing this on an open G string. That way, it's kind of going to sound closer to what's on the record. Third thing and the final thing, do not use a pick while playing this tone. Uh, this preset is going to be really, really heavy on reverb and you don't want to be doing any strumming or any sort of pick attacks on the strings because it's going to have clipping and it's not going to sound the way it's supposed to sound. So all plucking with your fingers and finger picking. All right, so I've got the Axe FX2 in front of me. Let's dial in the amp and the cab first. The amp is going to be a vibrato verb. Jeff Buckley has been known to use Fender and the Vibrato Verb amp, so we're going to use that. We've got a couple of variations in the AxeFX2. I'd like to keep it simple and choose amp number 260, which is a Vibrato Verb here. I believe this is a black face sort of a Vibrato Verb recreation, the AxeFX2. So I'm going to keep everything at stock at the moment. Let's go ahead and add the cab as well. For the cab, there are plenty of cabs to choose from, stock cabs, which sound really nice on this particular amp. Fender amps have a lot of choices in the AxeFX2. I'd like to go ahead and use F022. This is a 2x12 cabinet, brown super. Kind of suits the kind of amp that the amp actually has a cab attached to it if you've seen a vibrato verb amp. So you're going to use a 2x12 cabinet here. This is a Fender brown face cabinet. Uh, no real rocket science behind this. It kind of sounded good to my ears and it's got nothing to do with Jeff Buckley, I believe. So you can use whatever cab you want to use. If you have a custom cab, you can use that as well. The idea is to sound really cool. <laughs> I've kept everything at stock. Let's hear how it's sounding. Volume is on full, tone is on full. I'm on the neck pickup. This is how it sounds. That sounds not cool, man. That doesn't sound anything like the tone we want to create. Let's go ahead and tweak stuff. That's probably because we haven't tweaked anything. Let's go ahead and tweak stuff and get the tone we want. So the first thing you want to do is tweak the amp. Now it's jarring quite a lot. You could push the input drop down and get it to a more clean sort of a uh, tone rather than having that edge of breakup sort of a tone. But I did something different. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, let's tweak the EQ a bit. Uh, push the bass down to around 1.2, 1.25. 1.27 let's keep it there uh, mids you want to push down as well again if you're using a telecaster this might be different for you so keep that in mind uh, treble I'm going to push up quite a lot it sounded quite boomy so obviously we need a lot of treble in there presence also is going to bring that upper clarity and uh, the upper top end so let's push it to around 8.4 now the master volume is tricky and like with most amps, you want to find that sweet spot where it sounds really cool. So for this particular amp, I believe it sounded really cool for me at around uh, 7.4, I believe, or so 7.5. Let's keep it at 7.5. Now, since you've pushed the master volume down, you want to compensate by the overall level of the preset. So I'm going to push the overall level to minus 7.4 and not minus 12. That's going to bring up the level a bit. Now for the cab, what I did is I went ahead and added low cut. I always keep the low cut at around 80 hertz. We're not going to use any mics because this amp, uh, this cabinet is already pre-miked with the M160, I believe. Uh, high cut, I'm going to push up to around 16,500. Now with that done, this is how it sounds now. That's sounding more like the tone we want, isn't it? Cool. So before we go ahead and do anything else, what I'd like to do is to add more of dynamic and uh, to add a little bit more of dynamics and to add a little bit more 
push to the amp, what I like to do is add a compressor in the beginning of the single chain. This is going to push the amp a little bit more and it's going to provide the compression that a compressor does. It's pretty simple what a compressor does. Uh, I'm going to change it to a pedal comp, keep the compression to around 5. Uh, attack you want low so that the compressor kicks in as soon as it can. Uh, release, bring it down to around 17 milliseconds. By the way, if I'm sounding husky, it's probably because I have a sore throat. Everybody seems to be having a sore throat these days, isn't it? It's just probably the weather. By the way, I'm fine. Nothing wrong. <laughs> um, hope you're keeping fine too as well, by the way. Uh, what you want to do next is actually use the level to push the amp a little bit more. So let's push it to around 2.7. Now, you don't want to push it too much. If you push it too much, obviously you start hearing edge of breakup sort of tones again. Uh, you want to find that sweet spot, spot according to your gear and push it accordingly so that you get that nice dynamic push as well because there are parts in this uh, song where he picks harder or he picks softer so it's going to give you that dynamic push and it's also going to push the amp to give you that sweet chimey clean tone so this is how it sounds with the compressor added in That sounds sweet, but it's far from the tone we want. So let's go ahead and add more stuff. The next thing I added is a chorus. Let's go ahead and add that. I added a warm stereo. This is going to give us that spread and it's going to make the tone a little bit more smoother as well. Bring the rate down as much as I can. I always do this. Uh, I don't like the wobbly, you know, sine curves happening in the tone. Uh, mix, what I want to do is push it down to around 28%. And that's pretty much all I did. I did not even go into the tone block and tweak stuff here. You can experiment here and try different dimension modes and try the high cut and low cut and see how it sounds to you. Uh, I usually do that but this time I kept it untouched. With that done this is how it sounds. You can hear the chorus adding character to your tone so without the chorus this is how it sounds. the chorus you can see it smoothens the tone out and make it makes it much more softer and makes it much more fuller isn't it beautiful let's go ahead do the next thing the next thing I added is a GEQ now usually I don't do this I usually tweak the settings in the amp and the cap to get the kind of tone I want but there are times when I like the settings that I've got in the amp and the cab and I don't want to tweak them. I use a GEQ to finally apply some finishing touches and you know dial in that little bit of tweak that I want to do in the final touches. So what I did is nothing but added some top end here. What you want to do is push the 2K to around uh, 2.1 and 4K to around 3. This is again all by taste, all by gear. If you want to tweak it, you might not even need this block if you're playing a Telecaster or a different guitar. But with that done, this is how it sounds. I haven't worked out the whole song, you can tell, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, that's pretty much done. So that's the basic tone that you want, but it's still missing a major chunk. I would say it's missing 60% of the tone. The reverb is what actually defines this tone. This reverb is so beautiful that it adds the real character to the tone. And I was, you know, kind of Googling around trying to find out what sort of reverbs was used on this track. And I stumbled upon the video from Paul Davids. If you don't know Paul Davids, you're clearly missing out. If you're a guitar player, you need to go and follow him. I'll link the video down in the description box below where he kind of breaks down this tone and kind of shows us how you can use the reverbs. He uses pedals, not the XFX2, but you can simulate that kind of stuff in the XFX2 as well. And that's what I'm going to show you. But he uses two pedals to kind of create the reverb that you hear on the track. Now, he uses a... Uh, Two reverbs as I mentioned, the one going to be a medium one and the other one going to be a long one. He explains it a lot in detail so I would recommend, strongly recommend go through that video but in short the medium reverb is going to add body to your tone and the long reverb is going to add the distance from the listener so that the guitar sounds much more distant and that's what creates that enormous beautiful immersive feeling that you get on this track. So let's go ahead and add the reverbs now. He's used 
obviously used pedals and pedals mostly work in series but unless you dial them in parallel i think he's using them in series what we can do in the axe fx2 is use uh, them in parallel which is a fantastic feature of the axe fx2 allows you to have 100 percent wet signal of a particular block so let's go and add the first reverb i'm going to connect the dots now i'm going to change this to a medium hall quality i like to turn high I didn't touch any of these things. What you want to do is obviously push the mix to 100%. You can change the bypass mode to, you know, mute FX in, mute FX in, but probably you're not going to switch this block off at any point in time. What does bypass mode do? Check my video out on how scenes work. You'll get a better idea of what those things do. Anyway, so let's go into the EQ section and that's where we're going to modify a few things as per the video that I saw on Paul, De Paul David's channel. What you want to do is take a lot of the low end out of this particular reverb that's probably because you're playing these bass notes as well along with your thumb sometimes they're louder sometimes they're softer based on the dynamics that you're applying and you don't want it to sound really boomy so you want to cut out all of the low end here what i'm going to do is push the low cut to 160 hertz and what that's going to do is create that curve that you see over here which is acting like a low pass actually and it's cutting off all of the low end from your reverb now, with that done, this is how it sounds. That sounds gorgeous and you can hear the reverb is adding a lot of more character and a lot of more body to the tone. But that's not it. Let's go ahead and add the second reverb now, which is going to be another hall reverb. This time I'm going to choose a large hall. As I mentioned earlier, there's going to be two reverbs, both of them in parallel. Let's go ahead and do the first things first. Let's put the mix up to 100%, change the quality to high. Now, in this reverb, what he also liked to mention is that he wants to push the pre-delay a little bit more up. And you can understand why he does that in his video. I'm not going to spend time doing that. Uh, I didn't find the exact number as to how much he's pushing the pre-delay, but for me, by taste, around 93 or 95 milliseconds sounds really cool. So I pushed the pre-delay up. But you also want to go into the EQ section. And in this case, you want to cut off some of the lows, obviously for the same reason as I mentioned above before, but you want to add more mids into it. So what that's going to do is make the guitar more distant and it's going to sound really cool. So first things first, let's cut off some of the lows. I'm going to cut off the, uh, I'm going to change the low cut to 80 Hertz. Second, what you want to do is go into the frequency one parameter and change this to 400 Hertz. That's somewhere around the low mid frequency. And what you wanna do is change the gain to around eight dB. Now, as you can see, that's gonna create a curve over here, which is pushing the mids up and that's what we want. Um, also, I don't believe I touched the high cut at all. Now, let's keep it at 6,999. I don't know why it doesn't say 7K, but let's hear how this is sounding now. absolutely fantastic and that's that's pretty much the tone but there's one final step left which he also talks about in his video is to kind of do a stereo sort of an effect using these two reverbs now if you've followed my channel and you've seen the two minute video tips that i have shown you you can use a mixer block here to pan the up uh, the medium reverb to the left and pan the long reverb to the right the large reverb to the right but if you're playing mono i have a better trick for you to do what you can do is add in a enhance block over here which is going to sort of simulate a stereo sort of a feel and give you that width and that depth that a particular stereo sort of setup would provide what you want to do is push this width up to around 77 percent and depth to around 75 percent uh high low cut i brought it down to 80 hertz for some reason i don't know why but play around and see how that sounds i added the enhanced block before the reverbs. I think it sounds better before the reverbs. 
may not even have much difference after the reverbs, but go ahead and try that out. Nobody's stopping you. Let's hear how this is sounding. Talk about that dynamics that I was mentioning. So before he starts into the intro, he plays this D chord, which is really loud. So you can actually hear it. parts like in the intro where he's playing really soft so you can hear the dynamics are really really good and the feel of the strings the way you pluck them is really coming out really well out of the preset well that's pretty much it guys that's the tone and that's the preset hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure you give this video a like comment down below how it sounds on your gear are you using a Telecaster? If yes, what settings did you have to tweak to make it sound good on your gear? Or did the preset just work right out of the box for you guys as well? I'm really looking forward to your thoughts and in case you haven't done so, please do go ahead and give this video a like and make sure you support the channel. In case you want to support me monetarily, please check the links in the description box below as to how you can contribute towards the channel via my PayPal account and in return, I'll give you a shout out in upcoming videos as well. And also goes without saying, if you aren't subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. There's plenty of tone on the channel. Please go ahead and do so. If you are an AxeFX2 user, I'm telling you, you'll definitely like the content on the channel. So please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can get subs you know, notified of all of my videos. Well, that's pretty much it. Until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you guys stay safe. Keep rocking, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.